Yeah, if anybody's, uh, if anybody's watching, sorry for the delay. I was interrupted. I had an important phone call and I forgot to, to pause the streaming, so.
Squared this edge off. Let's square this face. This is a uh, is a perfectly square board. Two faces squared, two edges, two long edges. I've been using my uh, my sliding uh, tail vise. I have one on each side of this, and it uh, works in conjunction with the uh, <coughs> with a twin screw vise, so I can I can advance it and retract it using the twin screw vise, and it glides along and it's locked in with this. Uh, well, actually, it's just backed off a little, so it slides. But this, uh, so it basically emulates a. Uh, an inset tail vise, and it's uh, I would say over here. It's about a half inch high. You can probably drop it to three eighths of an inch. It's still it's still rigid enough, but I wouldn't go I wouldn't go below three eighths of an inch. So and then it works in conjunction with the bench dog, and the bench dog is just like any other bench dog. So. So I've been using this system for, uh, for about a year and a half, two years now, and I have it on both my workbenches. They're both similar workbenches. You notice they're loose. This one isn't so much. This one needs to. So you can finger tighten them almost, and the uh, the bolt that actually um, prevents it from rising and keeps it, keeps it sliding is. Uh, is uh, actually it works with an inset inset nut into the bench attached through the bottom so the whole <coughs> assembly can be removed and it's only sitting in a dowel at the end here at the actual uh, face of the end vise so the twin screw vise job so uh, I developed this I have several iterations of this with a wider one and I still have it here somewhere but I, uh, so many jigs here. Well, they're not actually jigs, they're like bench top accessories, I call them. But this is a nicer version. It's, uh, it's, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it there. It's, it has two sliding components. It's one large assembly, so I could use it for wider boards. And it locks in with two dowels in the, uh, in the actual uh, end voice, the chop. So it works similarly, except that it's much wider. And then because it's wider, I, I set it up with two, uh, two slots for the, uh, the bolts that hold it down. That's pretty cool. I've even not well, I, so long I haven't used this one, but I even have mylar tape underneath to keep it to keep it sliding well. This works really, really well. It works uh, exceptionally well because it has a uh, rabbited uh, groove on each side, and that helps with uh, thinner components. So I can use uh, I can hang them off the edge and use a plow plane. 
to, uh, to create grooves or uh, rabbits along the edge of a chore bottom. Well, there isn't any really uh, curriculum or, or agenda here today. I'm just, just showing some stuff, what I normally do at a workbench. I'm probably talking to myself here. There isn't anybody here that I can see. If anybody's here, please chime in. With at least maybe a short comment or Just shut my uh, <laughs> my music off. I have some background music. I play it much louder when I'm working here without when I'm not live streaming because I uh, I've had two incidents where I was flagged by YouTube for using copyrighted music when I wasn't really using music in my in my videos. I was just playing it in the background. But it's uh, such a powerful uh, uh, software they have that that picks that up. Very very amazing. So now that I've shown the, uh, <clears throat> you not only you can not only uh, play on edge, but you can play in the uh, the face of boards. And I keep using this narrow board. I should get a wire. Actually, this little uh, off cut needs, uh, needs to have one end. So I'll just back the sliding. And uh, <coughs> I usually wax the, uh, I use paraffin wax and I usually scribble some on a, on a sole on the underside of the hemp plane. It works, uh, it, it allows it to glide better. This particular board has uh, a little bit squirrely grain, so it's a uh, but I managed to smooth it. So let's just see if it's square. Oh, not quite square. Everybody has a different technique to uh, the square edges off. I use, uh, I just hand plane one, one side. And it sort of corrects it. And then I, uh, I run one pass with the uh, full wood. So I try to. So well, that's the full width. So that should be. That's good. Now this side you notice some burn marks. This is from a, a table saw blade.
It's from a table saw blade and uh, when you're hand planing always ensure that the, uh, the grain orientation is correct. So in this case the grain is running towards the uh, top in this direction. So I, I would plane in this direction. If I plane in the opposite direction, I'm actually tearing out the, uh, the wood fibers along the edge. But if I hand plane in the correct direction, I'm actually slicing them as they, uh, as they interface with the top. They're tangential at that point. So you notice, uh, notice all the burn marks and we'll take care of that with the hand plane. Okay, so I've uh, managed to hand plane the burn marks off and it's really, really fantastically smooth now, but it's a little high on one side. So that's, uh, getting, a, getting that edge square with the uh, either both, face, uh, both faces or, or one face is, uh, is an acquired skill. And you know what, I'm going to back this. Uh, blade off, just a little off. Perfect. So what I did is I, I actually took, uh, I actually uh, removed one shaving. If you're counting shavings, I've demonstrated in a previous live stream. If you're counting uh, shavings, I removed one shaving from this side and I brought it back down the square or 90 degrees to the face and then I ran one I ran the hand plane across and ensured that the uh, shaving was a full width and I removed any planing marks and, uh, and as well I have a perfect uh, four sided uh, four square board, small board but in any case. So that's uh, and I can't really um, stress how smooth that is. That surface is just there's no way you could achieve a smooth surface like this with uh, with sandpaper uh, absolutely no way i mean unless you're using a uh, 10,000 grit or something or 6,000 grit uh, it just doesn't work so so if you're uh, if you're finishing uh, if this is a component of a of a piece of furniture and your your uh, your finish is uh, is absorbed into the wood your final finish not a not a film finish with lacquer. You want the uh, surface of the wood to be super smooth like this, because this is the, <clears throat> you know, the, the whole tactile experience is you're you're feeling that uh, that smooth surface afterwards. So normally you don't have to go to this extreme with a uh, with a film finish, because it uh, it coats the uh, essentially like lacquer. Lacquer is a good example. It or varnish. It coats the uh, it, it creates a barrier between the actual wood surface and the uh, and the film finish. So here, <clears throat> once you apply a finish like a film finish, you're essentially smoothing the finish afterwards, and not so much the wood. So it's not as critical for the wood, unlike a uh, finish that absorbs into the wood, like oil or even shellac. So. So I wanted to demonstrate. Uh, so you can do both the uh, the uh, long edges and the face on using this uh, sliding tail vise system that I have, and I, I use it quite a bit. I, uh, I, I use it all the time. And uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, demonstrate. Demonstrate the uh, a bird's mouth attachment.
So this is the, um, the bird's mouth attachment. So I've created all my, uh, I call them bench accessories, they're not quite jigs. Jigs are used for specific applications, uh, furniture, com making components of furniture, but this is more of a general bench accessory. And it plugs in, so I've designed this to plug into my own workbenches. They're both similar workbenches. I have one at the other end of my workshop. And um, I have a, at least three or four of these bird's mouth accessories. So they plug in, and the beauty is I can plug it in on both sides of the workbench because they're the bench dog holes are symmetrically arranged. So I can do that, move the, uh, my bench dog over. So I'm not using the sliding tail vice now. So, for example, if I'm uh, If I need to, actually this piece, this small piece has a, has one edge that is uh, fairly rough, so it's never been uh, hand planed. Uh, so I can, so something uh, <coughs> very thin like this uh, wouldn't lend itself well to, uh, unless you're using, uh, you can probably use, a, use this in a face splice, but anything longer anything wider it becomes cumbersome to use in a face slice and I do have a face slice on this bench but it's on the, uh, the opposite side opposite corner and I just I can't have everything here but I'll have to start demonstrating uh, some applications with the face slice so the uh, bird's mouth jig is ideal in this uh, in this scenario because it locks the piece in vertically using two wedges Slide my uh, my thin piece in with the uh, edge that needs hand planing, and again the correct grain, grain orientation is in this direction. So I need to be planing in this direction, uh, in this direction. So I slide this in, and I use these two wedges. They work in conjunction with the bird's mouth shake. So this slides into the end and then the wedges lock it in and it's super strong now. It's vertical and uh, it works really well because uh, it, it, the hand cleaning action itself keeps the piece from sliding back so it keeps locking it in. And I'll demonstrate that. I, just wanna... I haven't been doing much of this live streaming so I'm trying to understand if everything's working here. Strange, I can't get the. Uh... So I'm, I'm working that edge now. I just. Notice the, uh, the sound that I'm playing made was irregular at the beginning. It sounds so much better now because it was already smooth. Just check it for square. Okay, perfect. So this board, this uh, this other side has already been half playing, so it's perfectly square now. So I have a number of these small boards around. I keep all my off cuts.
I probably have a years and years of a collection of offcuts and boxes that I intend to use one day, but uh, I just keep adding to the pile. So this, uh, this also works well with uh, <clears throat> actually with wide wider boards. Now you would almost have to use this in a face vise if you're not using this system. So so if I'm uh, Again, I always check the grain orientation before even starting the hand plane. So if I'm, if I'm going to be using the bird's mouth uh, accessory, I would slide this in from the end, lock it in. Lock it in. Yeah. This is a little more, <coughs> a little more skill involved because the board is because it's so thin and so tall. It actually flexes. So you need to be very light. Actually, what I. Uh, what I should say is I use the best, actually, the best thing to use with this is a standard block plane. What I mean by standard, it's uh, it's a bevel up block plane, but it's uh, set at a conventional 45 degree angle. So you've been using this on my thicknessing jig, but because it's lighter and more uh, maneuverable, it can better work. You notice the shavings are exactly the the full width of the uh, of the edge. So once you've squared off that edge, you don't really have to worry about beveling it or chamfering it in any way. Just Shavings of, uh, you can almost tell the difference, they become fluffy and they were a little heavier before. So. It's so much fun doing this that you just want to keep doing it. <laughs> So it's important to mark off exactly how much you need to hand plane you know, not get too carried away with doing this. So I've set up my, uh, my views, uh, you can actually watch me doing this in a more, uh, in a wider uh, area, a wider view in the small inset using a different camera and then the uh, <clears throat> the camera, the, the focused camera focuses on the, on the actual task here. So I'm hoping that I prefer that personally. Because that top part of the workbench is rarely used anyway, the opposite side, unless I'm working on that side. I just use it to keep a few pieces now. I've been doing some uh, some Kamiko demonstrations recently. So I've been uh, demonstrating on how to create uh, grids and that sort of thing. So I'll be doing, uh, I don't think there are too many people watching, but I'll be doing this, uh, it actually is recorded, I think on YouTube at least, possibly not on uh, Twitch, but I'll uh, be doing this maybe for a half hour, 45 minutes a day, and I'll demonstrate, I'll keep, or maybe every second day, and I'll keep demonstrating the, uh, 
some of the techniques and appliances or accessories I use to uh, at my workbench. And this, these are uh, jigs and uh, bench, bench accessories that I've developed over a number of years. And uh, what I'll be showing you is the final version of everything. I have some earlier prototypes uh, that I've shown earlier. Here's one example that I showed in my last stream. This is a, uh, a planing stuff that plugs into uh, two holes, two bench dog holes. And it's, uh, it's fairly thin at a quarter inch, so this works to, uh, to butt your board against while you're hand cleaning. And I have a different version of that. I have this planing stuff. It's a little shorter version. It's almost the same. And this is a different one that not only locks in through the bench dog, but it locks, it, it uh, plugs in and it locks into the side of the workbench. Now this is customized for this, this workbench. You, if you make something like this, you need to customize it for yours. So the distance between the center of the, uh, <coughs> the dog and this edge is the uh, distance from the edge of your workbench to the center of your bench dog hole. So this worked really well. It's probably about three eighths of an inch though. In thickness. Actually, seven sixteenths, so it's below a half inch. I do have a thinner one at the. Uh, the, other the beauty of this is because my workbenches are are the same. They're uh, set up the same, and all the holes are uh, are bored at the same spot on each of the workbenches. I can the, the bench accessories have become portable for me. Okay, well I thought the other one was thinner, but they're actually the same, they're both, uh, and the nice thing about these, uh, not so much the bird's mouth attachment, oh this actually has a little, uh, wow. okay. the nice thing about these uh, cleaning stops, that they're, uh, you can actually uh, raise them, using it here. Notice it plugs in so I can raise it. So if I have a if I'm hand planing a thicker board I can actually and that friction fits I can raise it from seven eighths maybe to three quarters of an inch and keep raising it and it locks in so it doesn't rotate because it's actually working with the bench stock and it's working with the edge of the uh, the uh, Sorry, the, uh, the edge of the workbench. So if I if I put the bird's mouth accessory, I uh, should have this over here. So if I'm kind of cleaning uh, uh, this board, and if this board were thicker. Uh, this is about three quarters of an inch for an inch thick or an inch and a half thick. I could raise this. It just gives a better uh, bearing surface if it's taller. If it's higher, I should say. Again, there's a little bit of skill involved in keeping the board, the board itself from rotating. But these uh, planing stops work well with wider boards too. So. That's this board, because this board is too thin. But uh, if I'm using, if I'm playing this board, 
actually works really well. So the wider the board is that you're hand planing, the less likely it is to rotate. And there's no need to, uh, to lock it in at this end, you just uh, use some. For light shavings, I'm probably going to have to rehome that iron. So I use a uh, I just use, I just feel the bottom of the sole and I can feel how far the uh, iron is advanced. Being maple, it's uh, not the easiest board to hand plane, but and this is a four and a half smoother, so ideally you should be able to take the full width of that easily with this. I'm going to have to rehome this uh, this iron. It's been a while. I just want to give a demonstration of how so without uh, any other attachment, any other uh, bracing, you can easily hand plane the surface of a of a board using simple stuff. Really super smooth finish. So again, this is a, it's not the easiest wood uh, to hand plane, and, and this uh, definitely have to rehome this siren. It's not it doesn't work as well as it worked uh, a while ago. So. So uh, I think that's it for today. I just wanted to see if this works, this whole setup with the picture-in-picture. Uh, picture and If anybody has any input, you can email me at, uh, or somehow communicate with me through a message at uh, WoodSkillsMag. And uh, my website is woodskills.com. And a little bit about my background, I, uh, I produce uh, I'm an educator, woodworking educator, so I produce content in the form of uh, uh, books, uh, online courses and classes. Uh, I have some plans at my website for some, uh, some of these, some of what I've been demonstrating today and some other, some other uh, uh, equipment I have, like a downdraft table, I think a router table. I'm not sure if the router table's there. If, you, uh, if you're leaning more towards power tools and all that, and uh, what else? Books. And I include some of my, uh, my books in ebook format in, uh, in, the, uh, in the classes and courses. So actually, it's a very good deal. I think the average is $40. So you get the actual course itself and the book. So, uh, so I think I'll stop for today.
So if anybody's joined, thanks for joining and uh, we'll see you maybe tomorrow or the day after. I'll try to schedule these at a certain time every day too that I haven't been doing. So this is more of an impromptu session, but